Welcome back to the Frankie Fix channel. I'm Frankie and we have a few projects going on now. I have a little snapper, uh, original snapper, a commercial grade snow blower that I'm working on and I've got a video going for that. And then I have a Toro 622 here that you can see. I've got the uh, housing painted, the bucket. I'm just going to need one more coat on that. And I'm not going to give you too much information because I have a whole video from start to finish on disassembling it, prepping it, painting it. We're going through every nut and bolt on this one. It's going to look real good. But as I was doing this, I was looking on Marketplace and I saw this Toro 521 here. And from a nice guy, Sammy Kerpilli, I believe. Is. I hope I say his name right. But I appreciate it, Sammy, for... Uh, given this to me basically. It was free. It was listed on Marketplace. Let's get a look at the model number here. It looks like 38052. The Toro Company, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Built in the USA by American workers. Alright, well let's see what we got in this box here. We got the recoil, which appears to work. That's good. We have a starter, Tecumseh starter. Now they use this starter on almost every engine. I mean, I have three snow blowers that are Tecumseh. I have an Aaron's, um, of course, the Toro 622, and even the little snapper takes a uh, it has a Tecumseh engine that takes a starter. This might actually work on there, but we'll test that out and make sure that works. We have a fuel tank which is a little bit smaller than the Toro 622 fuel tank. We'll clean that up. We got some kind of bracket here. We have, and I don't know what happened here, it looks like somebody cut cut this all up here. I'm not sure what the deal was there. Sometimes there's an issue getting one of these bolts near the muffler out. Maybe they cut it because of that, but here's a piece here. We have this which doesn't even go to it. I'm not quite sure what this is. Maybe Sammy would want this back. It says part number 6701. Not quite sure. It looks like some kind of mounting thing for a bike. Maybe to mount a speedometer or something. We have the, this is actually the heater box that goes over the carburetor. We have the uh, choke knob. We actually have the key for it. And it says Beachies, 2731 Erie Boulevard, Syracuse, New York, 13224. So this must have been bought from there. It's from Syracuse from a, quite a while ago. But that's cool to have the key for the, uh, the it's basically a kill switch on the handle. So that's good. We have some drywall screws. I'm sure that these don't go to it. We actually have the uh, carburetor float bowl bolt. And I can tell because the t back then these Tecumsehs were adjustable. You could adjust the, uh, the air fuel mixture. This is actually the main jet from it. So at least I have that. Uh, there's a few more bolts in here, some more drywall screws. Not sure what those are for. We have a few more bolts here, which I believe probably go to the uh, the housing for the pole rope there, and another bracket. Let me get this recoil on here. I'm just missing one of these head bolts here. did feel like there wasn't much compression. I was just turning the flywheel by hand. 
didn't seem like there was much compression there, so I'm not sure if there's an issue there or away here. All right, so we have our key in and we have it in the on position. We have the ground wires hooked up to the side of the motor where they belong. As you can see, the carb is entirely missing. And this stuff is absolutely useless. <laughs> Okay, so after several attempts and uh, seeing vapors shoot out the right side of the engine, I was right with my original conclusion. I didn't even need a compression tester. You can just tell when you're pulling the rope on a machine whether it has good compression or not. But if you look here, this is where the head gasket is. That's where actually a little bit of fuel was coming out and I was feeling and seeing vapors come out of there. So it looks like the head gasket is bad on this. So that's probably why it was all taken apart. So while we've got it here, let's go ahead and remove the bolts on that head and remove the head and take a look at it. There's where your spark plug would be. And here's the gasket. It doesn't look horrible, but we could clean this up and uh put it back on there. I do have some gasket sealer but I don't know if I want to put the time into it. But that's what you're looking at. You got the piston here. You got your valves. Intake and exhaust valves here. You can see as the piston goes down up and down you see the valves opening and closing I mean those might even need to be clean well, that's basically it that's the piston that's the valves alright what the heck I'll do it just for the channel I'll do it so I have some moto seal. I think I'm going to use that. We're going to clean up the surface here. This valve I'm going to just clean up with a... Uh, I'm going to clean these valves up a little bit with the wire brush. It's a brass wire brush.
All right, the surface has to be clean very, very good, so I'm using some mineral spirits. I already did the wire brush, not too aggressive with it, because it has to be a perfectly smooth surface. So I'm just going through and cleaning, getting ready to apply the uh, gasket sealer, the moto seal. So I'm cleaning all the parts up here, all the surfaces. So when we put it on there, we have a nice seal. We have the gasket here. There is some rust on it. But even the minute uh, change in the surface, smoothness of it, can cause a problem. But that's where that sealant will come in. It'll kind of uh, fill in those gaps. I'm just doing this for the video. For Take a chance. We don't know if it's going to work, but you could have an, an issue somewhere else. Could be an issue with the rings. I'm going to continue to clean these up best I can. We're going to lay down some uh, gasket sealer on. Probably going to do it on this piece. Put our gasket in there. I might even do a little on the bottom and I'll do put the gasket on. And then I'll put some on the top. like a gasket sandwich. Yummy! Alright, so we have our gasket sealer. I'm going to be careful around these valves. You don't want this stuff getting in those valves. So I'm not going to get too crazy around those. This stuff will spread out when you put the uh, put the gasket over it and tighten it down. Now we'll go ahead and put our gasket on here. Now I'm going to apply some to this top of this gasket and then I'll put the, uh, the head cover back on here. Don't have to get crazy with it, just a thin layer. This stuff does tend to be a bit messy. Doesn't lay on like the other Permatex stuff. It right, it looks lined up to me. I'm gonna put the cover back on here and get the bolts in there.
do you want to tighten these in a cross pattern? So I'm not going to bore you with doing that, but I'm just going to put the cover back on because those bolts that hold the cover on are the ones that, same ones that go in here. I'm just going to clean up the edges a little bit and then we're going to get something to eat and uh, let this set up for a while. Okay, so we have it all back together. We're going to let this set up for quite a while. We don't want to rush into it. Uh, we don't want to rush into trying to start it. It may work, it may not. Hey, it's just fun trying it anyway. Uh, but we'll come back to it uh, as soon as that's dry. And we'll give it a shot. Okay, so it's been 24 hours. I think the gasket has set up on there. I'm going to go ahead and spray some more carb cleaner into the... Uh, top of the engine where the spark plug goes and we're going to try to start it and see what happens. And, uh, it did start to try to start we're going to try some gasoline in there and, and see if we can't get it to run for maybe 10 seconds or so it's not going to run for longer than that we don't have a gas tank we don't have a carburetor but this is a good test to see if uh, the engine actually runs so let me get some gas I'll be right back So let's try the electric start for the heck of it while we're messing around with it. I don't expect it to run for too long, uh, but a couple seconds just lets us know that, it, that the engine's working. So let's give it a shot here. So that looks like all it was was the, the head gasket there that we had repaired wasn't getting enough compression. You can feel the difference when you pull this. It's a lot better compression on it. We're going to get this 521 running. Um, there are some issues with it. We're missing the carburetor as I said. The linkage is missing. But we do have some solutions for that and we're going to get to that. But first we have to deal with the uh, varnish issue that we, we have. And that's probably why this person uh, was working on it and it was so varnished up. The carburetor's gone. You know, it was probably all gummed up. It was sitting for years. So we're going to try some different solutions on a uh, gas tank. And this can apply to a lawnmower, snowblower, uh, just a plastic gas tank. It's all varnished up. It's a mess. It stinks. It's sticky like glue. So we're going to try different home products and see which one works the best. Uh, so maybe that will help you out. So stick with the video and we're going to get to that right now. Alright, so the entire fuel delivery system on this Toro is basically gone. There's no fuel line. That's missing. We're going to have to put a fuel line in it. The gas tank is all varnished up. It's a total mess. It was probably sitting for several years, many years. You can see how brown that is there. So I would say that the oven cleaner is doing the best job of everything. 
and I'm looking in the bottom here and I don't see the the varnish was I mean it was caked down there on the bottom it's done an amazing job on it so I would say the uh, dollar store oven cleaner is the winner here I'm going to try several different treatments on it alright so I've been doing this for several days it's probably been a week on and off soaking it you know it's going to take some time to clean that varnish out of there it's hard to get in there you know I did even take a screwdriver and a, I cut a piece of rag and put the rag inside and kind of took the screwdriver and scrubbed the bottom but now I'm just running water through it just to make sure the cap venting is good and that it's flowing good out of for the fuel line for the that's going to supply the carburetor and you can see it's flowing really good definitely a good flow there for the gas so like I said what I'm going to have to do now is rinse it really really good with just water shake it up several times set it out in the sun alright so as we're waiting for the gas tank to dry out you can see there's no carburetor here there's actually a bolt missing here there's no linkage for the governor arm but we've gotten that we also have a carburetor we're gonna have to take this manifold off and we'll clean everything up just like we did with the other Toro machine uh, I like to go through everything in detail um, so let's look at the, the box I ordered for ten dollars the carburetor and see what what all came with it I don't need this handle here uh, but we need a bunch of other things that are missing like the primer bulb the primer line there is a piece of gas line it might be too short but I have other gas line we're going to use but let's look at the box I ordered for ten dollars and see what comes with it all right so let's see what we get for ten bucks on Amazon as a carburetor maintenance kit and we know this didn't come with a carburetor at all it's missing a bunch of things and this box covers most of the things we're missing for ten dollars so let me show you what you get for ten dollars this is part number x001 upb gm1 and it's hua hua ya hua ya hua ya we specialize on maintenance kit for chainsaws, snowblowers, lawnmowers, and tillers. Carburetor maintenance kit. So let's look what we get. We get the carburetor. Nice, all brand new. It's got the metal fuel inlet. A lot of them on these have the plastic one. That's metal. So that's nice, brand new carburetor. We get the uh, knob one of the knobs I'm sure you're familiar with what this is for is for the uh, speed adjustment where you select the snow blower on high speed low speed idle whatever that's what that's for we have the choke knob here brand new we have a fuel shutoff valve which we're definitely going to add to the machine it comes with a fuel filter which we'll probably use in this case because of the issue we had with the fuel tank although visually and scent I'm smelling it I don't smell the varnish anymore I've rinsed it and soaked it so many times I probably took a total of a week to you know to do it all we're letting it dry right now in the sun so we'll definitely integrate this into it it comes with these clamps little tiny clamps for the fuel hoses comes with the gasket which we're going to need to hook that up to the manifold on the 521 it also comes with the primer bulb which we definitely need because that's missing and the primer line and that primer line is going to go into the carburetor right here and that's how you're going to prime it so that's nice to have and it did come with a section of fuel line so I don't know if this is going to be long enough because that line is totally missing so we're basically rebuilding the entire 
fuel delivery system here. Um, this comes with most of the parts we need. Now what was also missing is this uh, governor linkage. It goes from the carburetor here to the governor arm. And that part is an original Tecumseh power part. And it was probably around $3. And it's part number 32698. Original service parts. You can still get Tecumseh parts for the old snow blowers. And there you have it. That's all the parts that uh, we're going to use. And so let's move on. And uh, as the gas tank's drying, we'll go ahead and take the manifold off clean everything up and prepare it, uh, get this carburetor hooked up. Alright, so we have our intake manifold here, and uh, here's where the carburetor would go. There is a bolt missing here, but I think I might have it in my box of goodies here that was given to me. I think I found it here. So that's going to work out. We have the gasket. What I'd like to do is take this off and clean it all up on the wire wheel. And I did take the muffler off. Two bolts here. Wasn't too hard. Might have to uh, put another gasket on there. It's not too bad, but there's part of something on here we're going to have to clean off of there. Anyway, let's continue with uh, taking this off. And then I can always mount the carburetor. So it's going to be a lot easier to mount this carburetor first on here and then because these are open these are easy to get to sometimes you got to take a uh, you know a pair of vice grips or something like this and turn these <sighs> they can be somewhat tough to get off sometimes <sighs> all right it's fairly easy There's one bolt. Now this is the intake, so this is where it's going to pull in the air and the fuel mixture and put it into the cylinder. So it's important we have a what? Are you kidding me, right? Someone put a uh, piece of cloth in here. We're not going to fall for a banana in the tailpipe. You're not going to fall for the banana in the tailpipe? <laughs> that's funny because it probably would have ran better when I did my test if this cloth wasn't in there although it did run for a couple seconds but they put a piece of a t-shirt which isn't a bad idea but I would have probably put it in here because if I didn't take this off I would have never known that uh, that t-shirt was in there alright so what I'm going to do is I took a container here I save all these containers and I put some Dawn Power Wash. Now this Dawn Power Wash works very well on greasy things. I did a video on um, using different products to remove varnish from the gas tank because this one was a mess. It must have been sitting for a very long time and probably the carburetor is probably why it's removed. And maybe they just got rid of it or they just gave up. Who knows but the Dawn Power Washer worked good in a container. I'm going to soak this probably overnight. I'll soak this manifold and then tomorrow we'll mount this carburetor on it. And then I also want to clean, uh, I'm not going to bore you with that, but I'm going to use the power wash on this engine and kind of clean it up a little bit better. I probably want to paint this. So if there's some rust on it, I think it would look good painted um, and cleaning off any grease that I see anywhere on the motor. So we're going to do all that and then we'll get back to it. Alright, so we've looked through the mystery box of components. The muffler I took off that was already on the machine. Hopefully I can clean that up. It's pretty rusty. I don't know if a wire wheel is going to clean that up, but we'll give it a shot. We have the choke control here. We have two screws that fit in there. So we're going to make use of those. I'm sure that's where they go. 
we have a couple screws here which are identified. These might be the ones that go into here. And then we have the bolts that are going to bolt the carburetor onto the manifold. And one's going to be longer and one's going to be shorter. We have the gas tank mount, mounting bracket. We have the heater box here. And I think I might paint these. I'm thinking about that. Originally I was going to use this machine for parts and I kind of changed my mind. Because why leave a machine that just as inches away from working and, and get rid of it you know what I mean and just throw it in the basement and use the parts I really don't need any parts I do have a Toro 622 I probably mentioned it that I just redid and, and that video should be up on YouTube we have this bracket here which I'm not sure where that goes it almost seems like that might be the bottom of where the gas tank sits on the slot in the bottom of the gas tank so we'll have to figure that one out and there's this which is a thin metal maybe it's a heat shield of some type I'd like to clean that up as well I'm probably going to paint all of these parts clean them up sand them a little bit wire wheel them um, what else do we have we do have the belt. We have a few of these gas line clamps. There is one tiny bolt here. I'm not really sure where that goes. Another tiny bolt here. They're identical bolts. So I just got to look for something that's requiring uh, bolts for a pair of something. Could go to anything. We have the jet the adjustable jet from the old original carburetor that's missing. I'm wondering if I stuck this in that new carburetor would I be able to adjust it? That I'll have to look into. But I do have the high speed jet for that. I may or not may or may not be able to use that. We'll see. A couple washers there is one shiny, looks like a Allen wrench or hex bolt. Not sure if that even belongs here. And that's what we got to work with right now. So let's see if we can piece this thing back together, clean it up, and get it to run. Alright, so let's get this thing together, see if we can't get this thing running. I'm not going to need this knob. I'm not going to need the other knobs, but I am going to use the uh, primer bulb. I'm going to need that. I'm going to try the fuel line. And I'm definitely going to use the primer line, but I'm not sure if this fuel line is going to be long enough. We are going to add a fuel filter. We are going to add, not the fuel filter, but I want to check the tank and see if maybe the tank has a filter in it. But uh, I'm going to definitely put this shutoff valve on there. But let's get this thing back together. Uh, typically these screws with the rounded heads on them are going to be the ones that are going to attach this portion here, which is the choke mechanism. It's going to go through this loop at the top. And the screws are going to be towards the bottom. And that there is where the uh, heater box is going to attach to. So I'm going to go ahead and take these two, put them in there. Let's see if we can't get this thing running. I do have a camera too kind of like a sewer camera. It's a cheaper one, but I want to take a look in that tank and see how it's looking. So make sure it's nice and snug on there. And this is where your, uh, your choke mechanism is going to go here. 
then we have the two bolts here to attach the uh, manifold. That part's going to go on the motor. And this part's going to go on the carburetor. We do have a gasket that came with it. Which is nice. Came with a gasket. We'll put the gasket on there. And the longer bolt's going to go on the left side here. Obviously it's thicker. And you can see the right side's a little bit thinner. So we'll go ahead and uh, put them on there. And I'm just going to tighten them a little bit snug for now. I'll get them, uh, I'm going to go back in the garage and uh, tighten them down. So we'll put the other one in here. finish tightening these down and we'll mount this on the uh, motor and uh, then we're going to get the gas tank and to take a look inside of it. it should be dry it's been sitting out there for pretty much the entire day in the sun and uh, then we'll move on to the next step here so this I'm going to just tighten these down right here this is 10 millimeter this is a 7 16 wrench I have on the uh, on the bolt on the nut so I'm just going to tighten these that one's a little tough to get to and uh, I'm going to have to use the open end side you can see you can't get the the round part of the wrench on there not a big deal tighten it good because these are definitely harder to get to um, when it's on the motor now it is an HS 50 5 horsepower HS means horizontal shaft just in case you're wondering and they are strong engines we can get this thing running I believe she will run. So there we have it all assembled here. That's working good. Choke closed, choke open. So let's uh, I'm gonna get the fuel tank. We're gonna get my camera. We'll take a look inside and see uh, first I'm wondering if there's a filter inside of there. Usually there would be a filter pad over the hole uh, where the fuel comes out. If not, I might consider doing the uh, fuel filter. But it might be alright if it's clean enough. But let's take a look at it. Alright, so here's our fuel tank here. And from looking at it, it looks pretty good. There are some spots in there, but the gas will probably dissolve the rest of it. I mean, it's broken down and it was pretty caked in there. So I'm going to take this camera here and I hope you can see I'll try to get as good in there as I can get here so I do see I don't know if you can see that, that's that the filter it's like a, a pad or whatever it's made out of mesh. That doesn't look too bad. So it's already filtered, so I'm not going to worry about the filter. Now you can see there is some, there is still some stuff in there, like right there.
but it's certainly a lot better than it was. I think I can get away with uh, maybe putting some gas in it first and then swishing it around and but with that filter on there that makes it harder. But let me get a close up view for you and I'll go back in with it and kind of show you. These are handy. This is a Depths Tech. This was one of the cheaper ones I got off Amazon, but it's good enough. It charges up with a regular phone charger. And I've used it for several things. But let me try to get you better in the screen there. And we'll go back in and take a look. Alright, so I put it in my electronics vise. Just so we can take a look. So we're going in. You see the top of the tank here. See, you do see a little bit little bit but all of that was was really bad and over to this side you can see that that's the filter Let's see if I can get a better there it is see that that's what covers the hole on the bottom of the tank for the fuel so and it actually doesn't look too bad considering but you do see some gunk in there there's not much you can do about I mean you get most of it out of there like I said I'll try to move the uh, get some fuel and move it around in there dump it out a couple times so yeah that's the camera view of it so uh, Let's go ahead and get this out there and uh, mount the tank up after I rinse it out with some gas. Uh, hook the carb up and uh, we'll move on to the next step. Alright, so in order to get this fuel line in here, we have to go through on these engines. you got to go through here and come out the other side. And I'll show you the other side. So I think I have an idea, since I have this camera out and it has this flexible line on it, I'm going to try to put the hose onto the, the camera part of it and pull it through that way. Now it's not real tight in there, it's just a matter of getting something to uh, put through there and kind of pull it through. Alright, so here's the other side here and this is where the gas tank is going to be above the starter. And you can see that little hole right there. So let me try this camera thing see if I can get this line pulled through there or I'm gonna have to find out do something else come up with another idea all right here's my flexible camera you know it's real flexible so I'm gonna try to feed that through the other side I'm gonna feed it through here then I'm gonna take this hose and I'm gonna stick it in there it's bigger than the hose so it's a nice tight fit in there and I'm going to try to feed it through here let's see if that works so first let me feed this through here see if I can get it to come out the other side if I don't kill myself first <laughs> yeah I do have it on the other side I'll try to show you that. All right, you can see how I have it. I got it going through that hole that I pointed out. So now I'm just going to put the hose over the tip of this and try to pull it back through there and hopefully it'll come out the other side. Then I can put the gas tank on and we can mount the carburetor. All right, moment of truth here. There it is. You can see we have our fuel line fed through there. So now all we have to do is put the carburetor here, mount the carburetor, and then we'll uh, get to the fuel tank part of it. So the, the kit did come with these small metal clamps. 
I do have clamps of my own, but I want to use these on the side where the uh, the shutoff's going to go on the other side. So I don't really care for these, but they were provided, so I'll, I'll use it here. They're just sometimes they can be hard to uh, to get on there, but this is going to fit pretty tight onto the carburetor nipple there so it's just a matter of getting this on here see they're just hard to work with and they fly off There we go. I think the best way was I squeezed them as far as I could squeeze these and then I put the pliers on this side and locked them and it kept them in that position. It kept it open so I could get that hose in there. So I'm going to put the carb on here. We'll take our banana out of the tailpipe that was left there for us. Now I am going to have to put this linkage on here, so I should probably do that first because I'm going to have to turn it to get that linkage on there. So let me get the linkage, but it should go in this, there's a big hole, one in the middle and then one to the left. It should go in the middle here and then it should go, not on these first two, there's two holes in the top of this governor and there's one below it on the left. I'm going to go one below. Now this one seems kind of odd. There's one, two, three, four, five. It's five holes down, which seems kind of odd. But we can make adjustments. You know, that's the thing. You don't know what the history is on it. Uh, but we might have to make some adjustments to that later, depending on how it runs. All right, part number 32698, Governor Linkage. One side's got to go in there, the other side's got to go, it's just easier because of the way this is bent. We're going to go into that hole that I mentioned, just like that I think. Should be just like that. That looks pretty good. We'll see how that goes. Let's get these screws in here. These bolts. We're inching closer to uh trying to start this thing. That's functioning properly. So I'm going to go and get this uh, gas line plugged in here and then we're going to work on the gas tank. Like I said, we might have to make some adjustments to this governor. The spring down there, we'll see how it runs. But we're good on here for now.
All right, that's looking good. So now I'm just going to put this muffler back on. A little concerned on how close this wire is here. I probably should have ran it on the outside of the fuel line. I might have to do that. I might have to take the fuel line off and because uh, it's awfully close to that muffler, that wire. All right, so we moved that wire over. See it's over here now, it's on the other side of the gas line. So it's, I think that's a better idea there. So I'm just going to put this muffler back on. Um, I'm going to clean all this up and probably paint all this, but I want to make sure it's going to run good before I spend any time doing any of that. So let me just zoom a little out here so you can see more of what I'm doing here. All right, so we have this bolt up here for the top of the muffler. And then you have these two long bolts and it's got a screw hole here in that little tab there and that's where the heater box where a bolt's going to go through the top of the heater box to mount the heater box onto that. So we're just going to get this put in here. I'm really surprised these came out the way they did. Sometimes they, they won't come out. That should be good enough because like I said once this is running and if it's running good then I'm going to go ahead and uh, try to clean this muffler up a little bit more on the wire wheel and do some painting around here probably paint this cover here so that's working properly that's kind of sticky yeah, there's not much room for that governor arm to move Like I said, I have no idea what who did what to this, so we'll see what we get when we fire it up and make adjustments after that. Alright, so I did now I'll move this uh, speed control. You see how it's moving better now? What I did was I just put some three in one oil. Apparently this when it's new it's a little stuck this throttle control here so when you go up with it it should pull it but when you put it back down it should return so that's what it's doing now so that's good alright we're inching closer here now I do have a uh, half inch socket here and we have a bracket. If you look on the bottom of the tank, you have these slots here. Well, that's for this bracket here. It's kind of like a bottom support for it. Then you have the heat shield. And that's going to attach below the bracket, support bracket for the gas tank. It's going to go on like this, using the head bolts. It's pretty important this heat shield unless you want to melt your gas tank. Now, I've seen videos where people didn't even put the heat shield back on there. Now, we're going to put it on. So I'm going to have to take off these bolts here. I'm going to try to do this one. It must be a smaller one, but let's try this these first. That was a bolt I had come up with because that was missing. So it's got a smaller, not a half inch. But 
I'll get to that after I take off these uh, head bolts here. And thanks to everyone who's following me on my uh, what seems to be my Toro journey this summer. I've got the other video in the works for the uh, total repaint for the 622. really went all out on that one. I'm keeping that one. But I might decide to sell this one. But you gotta wait for the right time. I'd say around October or November. But either way I want to make sure it's in uh, really good shape for somebody. We'll see. See what happens. So we put our heat shield here. And our bracket's going to go here. And then the tank's going to go right here. Let me put them back in. Like I said, I got some engine paint. Probably gonna go ahead and paint paint these. You know, get them out with the wire wheel and paint them up like I did with the 622. But I just want to make sure it's gonna run first. It's gonna run good. It's not worth doing all that for nothing. find the right socket for that. It's a little bit smaller than half. All right, we got seven sixteenths. Seven sixteenths. I hope it's long enough because it's got to accommodate the thickness of this bracket. I'm going to have to find another one it was missing the bolts to mount the starter. Yeah, I think it's going to be long enough. This is going to go something like this. here just to make sure it's tough to get in there. Let me 
check the bottom. Yeah, that's a ticket right there. Might be able to do the fuel line with this on here. I just thought it would be easier if I take a look under here. Yeah, there is an adjustment. It's kind of an adjustment. I could probably loosen it up. Might be a little bit easier to. Yeah, I'll try to get that fuel line, I'll try to get the shutoff on there. Without having to take this tank off. Alright, so we got you on the floor cam here, so you can get a better view. I did cut a piece off of the hose. Because it was too long anyway. We're going to put this in like this. Yeah, we'll put it in like that. And unfortunately, the clamp that I had, these little clamps, this one might work. I have another one and it didn't, just didn't work. It's too loose. But I do have an assortment of different clamps. I have these type of clamps, which I like better. We're going to have to use those. But that clamp looks like it's going to work there. So we'll use this clamp here. Then we'll take. this piece of hose and put it in here and we'll use this clamp on there and of course they have to make it a regular head on here hopefully I can get some more tightening out of this want to go too crazy it's just plastic but we do want it snug and that's probably good enough there now I'm gonna have to put one on the top so I'm just gonna try to tighten it as much as I can so it slips over this hose Do the rest when it's on there. So we'll get that on there, slip it on the bottom of the tank. And I think that's that's nice. That's accessible here. Go ahead and get this one on. It's tough because you got to hold it, but if this screwdriver slips, you're going to be poking it into your finger. I think that's tight enough there, so that's off. This would be on.
want to make sure it's not kinked up in there. But it looks good to me. I think we're ready to put some gas in it and not uh, give her a whirl. Alright, I'm just going to hook the primer up and just let it hang there because I'm not ready to mount it in here yet. If it runs good, like I said, I'm going to paint that all up. So I'm just going to put it in here. Turn the gas on. pretty darn good I'll tell you that much uh, we have a runner but I'm looking at this heater box and look what somebody did and I've seen some pretty ridiculous things in my life and this ranks up pretty high if I put this on here which it's really not that hard to get off there'd be one bolt here and two here and what they've done is cut the side off so now this is a heater box. This is designed to keep the carburetor warm, but it's also designed to protect it from snow and everything else. So now what they've done is they've cut a big hole in the side of it, probably to access the carburetor. Wow. Which they could have just done by taking this off. I don't know why it would have to be accessible that much, but now you can see it's all open here and you can see the carburetor. So. I don't know what we're going to do about that, or if it's going to be okay or not, but I don't think it's a good idea because now it's uh, kind of exposed there in the front. Alright, so we're going to fix this issue here with this box. I'm not really happy with that. I like the carb to be to have that shield there. You can see how it was cut here. It's not a big deal. I already cut the piece and I'll show you what I came up with. And then I'll show you how to bend sheet metal if, if you're interested. But basically this is the piece that I had made. And you could see how I had fitted in there. It's a pretty nice fit. I even did the tried to duplicate this side. In fact, I just traced with a marker on the sheet metal this side. I traced it like this on the sheet metal. And that's how I came up with this side. And I didn't want it real sharp, so I went ahead and did some some folds, kind of like you have on the bottom of your car doors. The seam is folded over, so it's not sharp, so you don't cut yourself. And this is basically just going to go on just like that. And it fits perfectly. And then I'm just going to put probably one rivet here. And, and two rivets here. One on the top, one on the bottom. And then I'll paint it all. And it's going to look real nice. 
So I didn't want to go like this, right? Because then you're going to see it's just a mess. So you definitely want to go on the outside. So how did I do it basically? And you can do it without any special tools. I have a piece of sheet metal. And for me, I was lucky. This was left behind by some furnace guys a long time ago. This and a, several other pieces. So I had, you know, I probably have about five nice pieces of sheet metal to do these little things with. So basically I just, I have a hard piece of metal here and they do have benders that you can buy. They're kind of like a, kind of like this, but they have a flat uh, area to it. Flat surface, like kind of like vice grips, but you can uh, clamp them on the metal and use them to bend, do your bends with. But if you don't have that and you have a piece of, nice piece of solid metal that's straight, you can do it with this. And I'll just give you an example how to make a nice bend with using no special tools at all. Just stuff you have probably at home if you're a pretty handy. But you can certainly find a piece of metal like this. So I just traced out kind of the size that I wanted to work with. I just kind of drew a line. You always want to wear some gloves and some safety glasses when you're doing this kind of stuff. And this metal is really sharp, so you got to be careful. Now, they do have different size or different types of cutters. They're going to have a left-hand side, right-hand side, and usually a center. And you can see these are, these are all different. And I only have two of the three right now here. But you can see how that's a different, it would provide a different cut. This one would provide like a straight cut, but they have a left and a right, and if you buy a set, they're going to come with the three of them. So I'm just going to start with the straight cut. And I'm going to start cutting. Now there's going to be a point where it's going to get more difficult. So what I do, in this case, is I'll just try to cut this piece off, because I really don't care about this piece. See, I just cut that off. Maybe we can use that for something else. And now I can start again with my cut. Or you can bend this up and continue your cut that way. So that's basically how I did that. So now I had my piece. And I took this and just basically put it up to the side of it like that to get that curvature that's on that side and just took a marker again and traced it and cut it out. Now so let me show you the bend real quick. It's super easy to do especially with these smaller pieces you don't have to buy any special hardware or tools or anything. And I'm just gonna set this you can put this in a vise with this together, like that. You could probably put it on a table with a, a large C-clamp just to keep this tight, but I didn't need to do that. What I'm doing is just doing it by hand and applying pressure to this. So what you want to do first is you just score it. Take a screwdriver and just score it. And you can already see from the scoring it's starting to bend up. But that provides that straight edge and it it helps it because now when I bend it I'm going to get a perfect bend out of it and I'll show you that. I'm going to hold it down and I'm just going to bend this up like this. Can you see that? That's a perfect bend right there. So that's basically what I did, and then I just uh, smoothed out the edges. You can take a metal file, because you don't, it could be like a razor blade here. But in where I could, I did the same thing with the bending, and just fold it over. I went like this. I actually measured this out a little bit bigger, so I could bend over. You know, the same thing they would do with like furnace ducting. I'm going to go a little bit further. So you have some room to make that fold over. 
And I did the same thing. I just took the marker, marked it, held it down. And uh, if you have a vise, it's even better for these smaller bends. I think I did that in the vise. I just put it in the vise and did the same thing. But uh, that's a little tip for you if you don't have all the fancy tools and you need to bend something. But I'm pretty happy with this here. You know, I wherever I could, I cut the corner so it's at an angle and it's not like a pointy corner. I did the same thing here. And uh, the bottom, I didn't bother to bend it over, but the sides I did. So that's what we got. So I'm happy with that. That'll fix that issue and then I can, you know, degrease it, clean it all up, and then we'll paint the entire thing. All right, I'm just gonna start with the top here. This top part, I think I'm gonna like it right about there. So I'm gonna mark, I'm gonna mark a spot over here. And then I'll mark a spot down here. I think two will be enough there. Two rivets will be enough there. And then this gets a little shady here because there isn't a lot of metal on this bottom part here. I was thinking of putting a rivet down here. I could still do that. But I think I'm going to put one rivet because there is a triangular piece left there that we can rivet to. So I think I'll just put one rivet right about there. So one rivet there, two rivets there. So I'm not going to bore you, but I'm just going to take a nail. It's all you need. If you have a center punch or whatever, that's fine. And I'm going to just take a hammer and just pound that so my drill bit will just sit straight so it won't go jumping around. So I'm gonna, that's what I'm going to do here. And I'll be back with the next step. take our rivet gun get a rivet in there now this is a pretty old rivet gun here model RH200 an arrow an old arrow one and this is nice because it has different tips here for different size rivets but I happen to have the exact size rivet uh, of the fitting that's in the gun here and basically what you want to do and I'm going to have to make the hole probably a bigger, maybe not. Let's see. you got to make the hole big enough for the top of this rivet to fit in. Not this part, but this part of the rivet. The bigger part. So I'm just going to see if it's... Yeah, that's pretty good. Fits in there perfect. I'm not sure what size drill bit that is, but it's... You know, you'll have to work with that depending on what you got in your arsenal. But we'll go ahead and put this in here. I'd like to get one started before I drill the other two. I'll get it in there. Super easy and now you just squeeze it. And it should cut off the end once it's done. It'll just pop. There you go. And that doesn't look too bad, right? The inside has a little bit of the piece of the rivet there. But that's necessary to, uh, to hold that rivet on there.
All right, let's get the rivets in there. Might put another another one here. I mean, it's very solid, but maybe just another one right down here because there's some meat left here. I don't know if you can see that. There's some meat left down at the bottom. So I'm going to do that and just put the other one in just to make it so it's not it's not flapping like that. Alright, and this is how it looks on the snowblower, of course, in its unpainted, unprepped state. Much, much better. Alright, so I'm just going to double check the oil. I know it had oil in it, or I wouldn't have ran it. I just did a quick check before. It looked clear, but my goal was I just wanted to see if it was going to run first. So now I'm getting deeper into checking the uh, oil out. So I'm going to check the level here. I don't know if you can see that it's like a it's like a half an inch over the full mark it's supposed to be here the full mark and it's over here so it's overfilled with oil or there's been so much gas in the oil that it raised the level up because it does smell like gas so what we're gonna have to do is before we run this again and do some further adjusting we don't want to ruin the engine, so we're going to take the plug off on the left side. We're going to have to remove the wheel. It's just the easiest way to do it. And then we'll get it tipped to the left and start draining this oil out and replace it. All right, so I'm just using the tire that I took off on the left and stuck it under the tire on the right and tipped it to the left. So now it's uh, supported so I can get to that oil plug on the left and we'll have a good drain because of the angle so we're going to get to that now alright so to drain this on the left side plug here I'm going to use one wrench to hold this uh, fitting here because sometimes when you start to loosen the plug on the end if it's really tight it'll start to turn out this portion of the shaft that goes into the engine so I'm just going to hold that steady with the one crescent wrench and then I'm going to turn this plug with the other alright so that's what we ended up with so uh, it's totally done draining we're going to put the plug back on and we're going to put some fresh oil in it Alright, so the manual calls for 21 ounces, and 20 is good enough for me. I put 20 in all of them. Uh, it's perfectly fine. And I'm just using a dollar store measuring cup. 
I think the cup was like a dollar fifty because it has ounces on it. So I just added eight the first time and I'm going to add twelve this time. Alright, so I thought before I close the video out, I'd at least explain how the governor works. Now you have the governor here, you have your linkage, and it goes to the throttle on the carburetor. There's a spring here for tension down below. And uh, over here on the speed selector lever, there's going to be a uh, adjustment on top. And you'll see when I'm moving it to high speed up on top, you see how it's pulling that governor to the right. It's pulling it over. Now, I already adjusted the RPM on this. It was a little bit uh, too low. And I eventually had to loosen this bolt down here and move, hold while holding the governor because the governor goes into the engine. Um, and I moved this adjusted this to where it needed to be and then tightened it back down. So if you've exhausted your options with this screw, turning it in or out to adjust the RPM and the spring is set up properly in the right hole, because there are several holes on this governor arm, then you're, you're going to have to adjust the uh, governor. But It's basically just a limiter. It keeps the engine from over revving, uh, keeps it the RPM, it governs the speed of the motor pretty much. So what will happen is if you over rev it, you end up blowing your motor. So I've already set the RPM. The factory and the manual the setting is 3300 plus or minus 150. So I've gone a little bit below that. I think it was like almost 3000. I'm happy with that for now. If I have to make an adjustment later, I'll do it. There is no load right now because it's not winter time, so I really can't test the load, but maybe I'll do a separate video on that when uh, the time comes. Of course, I can make it snow. So, what I'm going to do is start the motor up, and uh, we'll take a look at the tachometer that I have here. And we'll just get a look at the speed real quick. But what you want to do is wrap it around the spark plug wrap it around about five or six times that's what this type of tachometer does there are other types uh, that you can use but this one uses the wire that wraps around the spark plug cable and basically as the engine is turning uh, the magnet is passing the uh, coil and producing the spark every time it turns around one rotation so that's what this is basically detecting Alright, so it's just not the same without snow. So let me add some snow here. Alright, a lot better. Well, let's get on with starting it. One quick note, you have a low adjustment idle screw right here that has no effect when this lever is set to the high speed. It's only when you go down to the low speed that you can adjust this one. Otherwise you have to use the screw that's on the speed adjustment lever itself to adjust the uh, RPM.
guys, so that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed the video and the content. And if you like the content, like and subscribe really helps me out. I've uh, got to get the channel growing. Um, and it's entirely free. So, again, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I think I'm going to do a follow-up on this in the winter time. But I'm going to go through the wheels and every nut and bolt, just like I did with the 622 clean it all up and I haven't really decided yet whether I'm going to keep it or sell it but it's a really good machine you know they don't make them like this anymore solid metal engine solid uh, oil's been changed and uh, there's many more things to do to it uh, but uh, we'll see you next time